Hello, Internet, YouTube, friends. Some reflections at the beginning of the day. I suppose I'm a little fresher between the ears at the beginning of the day and some reflections and what you see I'm wearing. I bought myself some new pinhole glasses. Now, I would recommend people who are interested in this, it actually does improve your eyesight and ability to read very small print when you're wearing the glasses and hopefully they'll have an effect on the on on my eyesight which is reasonable but these are not as good as the original ones I got and uh, the reason is that I believe they're curved they're curved and uh, they distort the uh, the little pinholes you don't get all the peripheral vision with the distortion because they're bent so it's not they're sexier but they're not as good as the originals they work on a peripheral basis as well. Some thoughts and reflections in the morning. And I got up this morning and I was, uh, I, I switch on the radio and, and uh, uh, I had a few thoughts. I've probably brought this up before. I mentioned this in some of my reflections and thoughts. And this is to primarily the people that are fighting the good fight. And there is we do have a fight on our hands, a monumental fight to rid ourselves of the nuclear monster and the people that are running the nuclear cartel syndicate, criminal syndicate. We need to be able to overcome this time for the last 75 or almost 80 years of being told what's right for us. And I'm going to talk about what we're being told in terms of a story. We're being told a story. Now, I used to love as a child, my mother used to read Brother Grimm fairy tales to me. Can you imagine that? I had nightmares <laughs> on some of these fairy tales, but they were very effective. They captured me. They, the story captured me. And I realized how attracted I am to the idea of a story, which is when I make paintings, I am not a, an abstract painter per se. I love a good story. I see a story creating a basis for my attention. And if you go over my videos in the past, I talk about my breakthrough, my realization. It's not so much about um, what it is that you're presenting, which is the story, but how it is delivered. The surface, the medium, all those things are very powerful and impactful communication devices that are highly underrated because we're focused on the story. So I'm going to talk about the story for just briefly. And the idea of being in a fight predicates that there is, there are misdeeds we are attempting to alter and change out there in the world. And we are continuously, from the point of view of defending ourselves against these misdeeds, we are responding to someone else's story. And my interest is to create a context. When I comment, the reason I come back on YouTube, my sense of dedication and fight, I suppose, besides the work I'm making to expose the trouble, the epic catastrophe of Fukushima that has occurred that is ongoing for over six years. It's, it'll be seven years very soon. There is no end in sight to the toxic materials being produced by this broken down, failed plant with four reactors blown up, gone, fuel pools gone, toxicity released into the environment. And I just read Dana Dernford's last header on his videos, please check out the nuclear proctologist, proctologist Dana Dernford. He said, it's a good thing the releases at Fukushima were not carbon-based. <laughs> it's a good thing there were no CO2 releases when Fukushima blew up. A fabulous headline. Anyway, the idea that something that I understand being a painter and I am connected to a very long line of people who told their story. It's something that I am attracted to. Not so much 
arguing, criticizing, exposing, challenging, which is part of it, but that is someone else's story. The misdeeds turn into stories. So when you turn on the news in the morning, you're going to get the man's story, the company line, because this entire network, the institutions around the culture, I call the culture of death, all the institutions that that are congregated around this nucleus, this, this culture, are propagating the story that come out of some very dark circles. And I have my thoughts and opinions on this. I believe we are going through an extermination. This is so obvious to me because there is no headway being done by all the people exposing the nuclear criminals for what they're doing to the earth, to all of life. There is no activity around this. It's all focused on CO2. The hooey, the hooey of CO2 compared, it's like I said, the CO2 is a hangnail on your finger when your arm is gangrenous. And I'm not trying to detract anyone from having their fight. Yes, we're dirty bastards, CO2, but you and I <sighs> breathe out CO2. And the earliest art ever produced was as a result of some early cave person blowing <sighs> CO2 through their fingers to create an image on the wall. CO2. So the idea that my, I want to keep this brief and I just want to reiterate something I think I've mentioned before. The people who are in the good fight, whatever your fight might be, even the environmentalist who still thinks CO2 is the problem, but those people who are actually fundamentally innately aware of the danger we are under with the nuclear pollution, what, what I understand is, through my own work, through my art, that I need to create the story that captured the people. The way I was captured by the story, for example, the Brothers Grimm. What was being implanted in my brain there? It's still functioning and lasting. You know, the princess on the P, or is that Christian Anderson? There is a group of these people that created the story. So in the sense, this is my thought. This is what motivates me to come on, on YouTube, because I feel, and more importantly, in the art that you see behind me, I am creating my story. It's not their narrative. It's my story. And I need to be able to tell my story. Obviously, as I've expressed, it's very difficult to get the attention of the curators, which are congregating around this, what I, I see this nucleus, this culture of death, all institutions are actually built around this focal point of the culture of death, which is why they don't want to look at stuff that upsets the apple cart in terms of the story they're trying to tell. So if I were able, for example, or other artists like myself who deal through a fundamental uh, a fundamental notion of conscience that we cannot make work, no matter how high-minded I might be from an aesthetic point of view, the idea of creating work based purely on an aesthetic principle of showing humanity how brilliant I might be is of no relevance if all of life is under threat. And this is something that comes through the great art in history. It might have been very subtle, but it's there, it's implanted. A story is implanted that is based on the conscience the artist has or had, that is being, the, and he delivers this notion of conscience through a story. And we need to begin to tell our story. The narrative is ours. Those people fighting the good fight, in some form or other, it's not just a matter of being in opposition and exposing the bastards, but it's also creating a story, which is why art has always been at the forefront, because even the oligarchs and owners seem to have an appreciation for some reason. The idea that if you have a Vincent, it's priceless. It's like a billion dollars, the best Vincents. Uh, people that are, and money makes no difference to these people. They can have a quadrillion and pay for a Vincent. It doesn't matter because they create the money in order to control us through their systems, again, based around this fundamental core, this culture, this culture of death. All institutions, whatever political, religious, social, all the, all the ideas we have about our society is fundamentally listening to someone else's story, not our own, which is why art is so important in the history of our growth and becoming. 
So uh, uh, my, my thoughts, my message to the people, do not just be in opposition. It needs to be, I don't know what percentage I would recommend. I would say 90% my story, not theirs. And the fact that 10% exposes the misdeeds is very vital and important. But we need to create a platform for us to emerge out of, like the butterfly in a cocoon. We are in a cocoon and this cocoon will not unfold, will not open up unless we stop the bastards from killing all life on earth through nuclear pollution. And how do we do that is to tell our own story. My thoughts for the morning for the uh, before I get going. My best to all of you.